Coming up next, a tool every Macintosh comes with that can really be useful. The Mac Activity Monitor, next on Hands on Mac. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by Peak Design. Peak has just launched their 10th campaign on Kickstarter. It's called Mobile by Peak Design. To learn more, go to peakdesign.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Hands on Mac. Happy Friday. Hope you had a great week. Uh, I'm recording this early, so I'm hoping that we had some new Macintoshes announced on Tuesday. I'm thinking we probably did. We'll certainly have a lot to talk about in upcoming episodes of Hands on Mac. But this week I wanted to talk about something that every Mac comes with, that every Mac user should know about. It's called Activity Monitor. And it's one of those files that you don't really see very often. It's hidden deep down inside your Applications folder. There's a whole folder there called utilities. Have you ever looked in your utilities folder? There are a lot of useful utilities. I'm going to highlight a few of them over the next few weeks, but let's start with the single most useful utility. That's your Mac Activity Monitor. This tool can help you diagnose slowdowns, problems, understand how much energy individual programs are using. That's really handy on a battery-powered laptop. It can also give you a constant update on CPU usage, memory usage, network usage, and more. But first, a caveat. Sometimes too much information is not a good thing. I want to warn you before you start paying too much attention, getting too obsessive about the activity monitor, that a lot of things you might look at and say, oh, no, are perfectly normal operation and nothing to be worried about. I hear from people all the time that say, oh, no, all my memory is being used up. That's a good thing. All my CPU cycles are, are being used up. That's a good thing. Your system is designed to use all the resources and if you need more memory or more CPU to release it for other programs, you, why would you have a computer with 16 gigs of RAM and only use eight? So <laughs> a good operating system, any computer is designed to use its memory and to use it efficiently. And in some cases, that means use 100% of it. Same thing with the CPU. That's okay. That's okay. So don't freak out when you look at this. Sometimes a little information is a bad thing. But there are a lot of things you can do with the activity monitor. And I, I want you to know about it. Uh, just a word of warning. Don't go crazy. The first thing you should do is look at the view menu. I think this is not widely known. But the dock icon in the Mac activity monitor can actually be a live icon and show a variety of things, whether it's CPU usage, CPU usage, CPU history, network usage, or disk activity. Uh, I'm going to make it network usage. Then we'll, let's go over here and, and look at our, our icon. And right now, there's not a lot to see. But over time, you can see this is starting to be a graph of network usage with upload and download. Isn't that cool? That icon can sit there and be constantly monitoring what you're doing. Now, there are great third-party applications. In fact, next week I'll talk about iStat menus, which is what I use. But you already have this built in, and if you're concerned uh, about network usage or CPU usage, this is a great way to, to turn on a live icon that's always watching. It's okay to keep Activity Monitor running in the background, but be aware... <laughs> It is a, a kind of a pig. It does use a lot of power. So probably on a, on a laptop, it'd be best to turn it off unless you're trying to diagnose an actual issue. Let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the columns here. I've used the term CPU several times. That's the central processor unit, your Intel chip, or maybe someday soon your Apple Silicon chip. That's the actual thinking that the computer's doing. And you'll notice on these columns, it'll show what percentage of a CPU any given program is running, how much time 
it's using, and uh, I think that's in seconds, how many threads it's using. Most processors have multiple cores, and in some cases with the Intel processors, each core can have multiple two threads running at the same time. So you can see if it's a threaded application, actually that's a good thing, that it's using um, available threads. That's great. Idle wake-ups is important too. I, you don't want too many idle wake-ups. That means when your machine is sleeping that the program said, wake up, I got to do something here. Something that has a lot of idle wake-ups is probably eating battery life, and it might be something you want to investigate. The percentage of GPU or graphics processor it's using, in my case, you see all computers have some form of GPU, even if it's the Intel provided GPU. So you see some of it's being used. And then this is the PID, the process ID. This number is valuable because if you need to kill a process, you can do it on the command line by number. Everything that's running has a PID, a processor ID, process ID. You also see who owns that process. Now, right now, I'm looking at processes that I started, but you can change which processes you're looking at. You, you, uh, you can uh, look at the your processes or, let's go back up to the menu, you can look at all processes. So let's go back to view, and here's your choices. All processes are not only the programs and processes you've started, you see I'm running my processes, but all other processes. Some are started by the system and other things. You can look just at system processes. If you are on a multi-user machine, you can see what other people are doing. You can see only the processes that are active. Sometimes you get an inactive process, something that's sleeping in the background, maybe a mail program that's waiting to wake up and go out and get the mail. You can also look at GPU, windowed, and so forth. Uh, these are valuable uh, additional, and some of them very advanced uh, features. This is quite an advanced uh, program. It provides essentially a graphic interface uh, to something that uh, you could do from the command line. You see, I can even add more columns, uh, the number of ports a network process is using, how much memory it's using, real, private, or shared, if something has suddenly been terminated, if something's in a sandbox. Um, these are all very useful, but generally, uh, this, the basic columns that you see here are all you'll need. Let's give a couple of examples of ways you might want to use this. Uh, for instance, sometimes a, a program will take over, and this is, happens from time to time with buggy software. And in fact, it, it, will, it will just be the only thing that can run, and your machine will feel very slow and sluggish. So you can look at your activity monitor, and you'll see that if something's using 100% of CPU and everybody else is kept waiting, and then you can actually use this to kill a process. That's what this X is. If I wanted to close the activity monitor, I'd click that X. Now, this is not closing it with a, a quit. This is a kind of preemptory force quit. So, uh, it does offer the regular quit, but the force quit is kind of preemptory. It's effectively killing the process uh, without giving it a chance to save out and so forth. So you don't want to use that all the time. Quit first. If it doesn't work, force quit. A lot of times if there's a runaway process, you'll be forced to quit it. And you can even do it using a kill command from the command line and this process ID. The graphics interface makes that uh, pretty easy to do. So that is one very useful thing. If you feel like your Mac is getting sluggish and you're not sure why, you can check Activity Monitor. It's not just CPU. Sometimes a runaway process will use more memory than it should. Um, you want to see what pro, you know percentage of memory. It also can tell you a little bit about stuff that's running in the background. I'm going to turn on uh, all processes so we can see not just the ones I've started, but processes started by the operating system. You can see, for instance, Firefox is using a lot of memory, not just the main app, but also the extensions. In fact, the extensions are using more memory. This is a chance for you to diagnose a problem if Firefox is sluggish or seems to be taking over the computer. You can see what's using processor power. You can see what's using 
memory. If you're on a laptop, you may also want to see what's using energy. This is a really great uh, view, and you can sort it by uh, energy impact from the greatest to the least. Remember I said activity monitor can really eat up resources? You see, it does, in fact. You can see how much power it's used over 12 hours. You also can see whether it supports napping. Uh, napping is a nice feature uh, where your uh, Mac can go to sleep but periodically, it's called power nap, wake up, and a variety of applications like your mail program and so forth that need to check things can do that without waking it up multiple times. They all can do it at once. Uh, you can also see if something's preventing sleep. If your Mac won't go to sleep, you can see exactly why. And you also can see who owns it. And I own most of the processes because I'm running as an administrator here. Disk access will give you some idea. Again, Programs can thrash the disk. Um, let's just uh, sort by the kernel task is obviously the operating system, so it's doing a lot of disk accessing. It's written a lot of bytes and read a few. Uh, running by root, right? Because it's a system process. It's a kernel. Uh, if you had a kernel task that seemed to be doing an unusual amount of activity, it might be worth investigating that. And then if you're worried about uh, your network uh, access, your internet usage, you can see what's checking the internet, how often it is, how much data it's consumed. This is all very valuable information that will help you diagnose problems on your Mac. Uh, a slow Mac, a Mac that's running out of disk space, slow internet, maybe uh, a Mac that's running slowly because there's not enough memory available. Give, and give you an idea of how much memory you use on a regular basis and whether next time you should buy more memory in your Mac. Activity monitor. There's a lot more to it, as you can see. There's some very deep stuff under the hood, but it's a very useful tool. I highly recommend getting to know it. Uh, and even when you first get a Mac, or if you're having problems with a Mac, letting it run in the background so you can get an idea of, of what's normal. It's good to kind of understand what the baseline performance is, how these applications behave normally, so that when you do have a problem, uh, you'll, you'll immediately see, oh yeah, you know, that shouldn't be using 89% of the CPU 90% of the time. There's something wrong there. A very useful tool. It's hidden away, again, in your utilities folder. That's in your applications folder. We'll take a look at some other uh, tools. And next week, I'll show you a third-party tool uh, called iStat Menus that I highly recommend. It's not free, but it will give you a lot of this information in the menu bar on a constant basis. It's kind of a fun way to see what your uh, Mac is up to. When I first got my iMac Pro with its 10 cores and 20 threads, I was very curious how much of that processor it was using. So iStat Menus showed me a kind of a regular basis exactly uh, what was going on. Activity Monitor will do much the same, and, and you already own it. It's free. So that's our tip for the week. Our show today brought to you by Peak Design. I am a fan of these guys. They just launched their 10th, yes, 10th campaign on Kickstarter. It's called Mobile by Peak Design. It's an ecosystem of cases, mounts, and accessories. These accessories all use something Peak Design calls Slim Link. When paired with your mobile device, it connects with accessories like a wallet with a built-in kickstand, charging and non-charging mounts for your car dash. To learn more about the Mobile by Peak Design campaign and all their other products, head to peakdesign.com slash twit. Visit peakdesign.com slash twit. Well, that completes this week's hands-on Mac. I hope... I hope I will be able to do hands-on on an Apple Silicon Mac sometime soon. You know better than I do because I'm recording this ahead of time. I don't know what Apple announced on Tuesday or if they even announced anything on Tuesday. But if they did, you can be sure we'll be covering it on Hands-On Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. One more twit? Well, check out Hands on iOS, twit.tv slash HOI, where I teach you all about iPhones, iPads, AirPods, Apple Watches, and so much more. If you want to get the most out of your device, then you got to check out Hands on iOS, twit.tv slash HOI.